hi guys I wanted to put this little video together for you guys and show you uh, some techniques that I use when I'm practicing roping the dummy I made this video about a year ago and just realized that I didn't make an intro for it so hope you enjoy if you do make sure to let me know and we'll make some more videos like this when I'm not hunting I really like practicing my roping so this is this is a couple of different techniques and two types of loops that I that I really like to practice thanks for watching hope you enjoy so right off the bat here, um, I would like to start off with around the world. Basically, just start at one corner and work your way all the way around the cow. Um, puppy's peeing in the back. So I'll start here. I guess this would be considered like standard team roping position right off the left hip. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and neck this dummy and then I'll work my way around. Um, <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be a real serious, serious conversation. So first off, I'm just going to swing with my loop pretty darn flat. And I'm going to be aiming for the left shoulder. Uh, so this is just kind of a standard maybe doctor loop or something similar. Uh, nothing super fancy. Pretty straightforward. Then I'm going to move off the hip a little bit. Maybe I'm having someone run a calf down the fence for me and I'm going to rope it off the fence. So I'm going to have my horse positioned towards the direction the calf's going to be going. And I'm going to swing with my tip off the left hand side just a bit. So the tip of my rope is the furthest point away from me right now. So when I say I'm going to tip my, I'm going to put my tip over my left shoulder meaning I'm going to pick my hand up and I'm going to turn my hand slightly every revolution and so that tip is over the left hand side of my shoulder where if I was to swing flat it would be more straight out ahead of me so I'm going to tip my tip I'm going to throw down the calf <laughs> neck towards the shoulder and from there, you're basically just dramatizing your tip over the shoulder. And the way I like to think about it is a calf's face, this is a little more dramatic, this rope and dummy, but a calf's face is uh, sloped at an angle to where your loop should match that calf's face. Does that make sense? So, meaning from this angle, my hand's going to be pretty flat, tip down. And then as I come around, my hand's going to start rolling until I get to here. And then my hand's going to start tipping up. And then as I come around this side, it's just going to continue to follow that, the angle of that calf's head. So, in that position, going to be about like this with my loop. In this position it's going to be even more dramatic. So you can see my loop is, it might be better from behind. You can see that. See my loop is really tipped right there. I'm going to forward and over my head. And when I deliver I'm just going to come across at an angle the same way I'm swinging. So from there I'm going to come to this corner and this is where your hand starts tipping up. Your tip will be behind you. Tip your rope will be behind you. I'm still going to swing with that same angle in my loop, but my tip's behind me. So when I throw, it drapes over that calf's neck. It doesn't want to wrap around the backside of that calf. From this angle, it's going to be considered what I, I would like to say, your release looks more like a wave, so your tip is as, almost as far back as you can get it. And your swing is hand behind the shoulder, and your delivery is going to be forward and on more like a wave than a traditional 
additional delivery. So I'm going to swing with my tip behind me. And then when I deliver, it's just going to be a drape, a big wave. I dropped two coils in that one. You're just going to have to play with that and see what works for you. I've found that dropping one or two coils works best for me on that loop. Swing with the tip behind me and then when I deliver, it's a wave. So I usually go two times around the dummy. First time will be swinging forward, and then the second time I like to swing back in. The reason being is ideally you always want your loop to come from behind the cap's head. So from this angle, a backhand would be uh, more beneficial because when you deliver, that loop's going to come from here and it's going to come around the back of the head and drape over. From that angle on that side of the calf, forward hand's better because when your loop comes around, it's going to be coming from the same angle behind the head and draping over. But a lot of times, you're anticipating the cap to go a certain way or thinking something's going to work out different and so you'll be swinging forward maybe the cap's going from right to left and then switches directions on you well now you still have to make the shot and so like I said before you want your loop to be at the same angle as the cap's head so I don't want to swing with my loop over here I'll never catch that calf I want to swing with my loop over the right hand side, basically a sidearm swing, sidearm delivery through the cap. Does that make sense? The same thing over here, this corner, it's going to be pretty similar swing and delivery. Um, I can get a little bit more dramatic with it if I wanted to, but uh, basically it's the same thing. So, Tip down, kind of off to the right hand side of me. And I want to get that loop to cross over. Make your aid on the other side of that calf when it comes around the front of that calf. Now I'll go back around the calf with a backhand swing. There's two types of backhand swings. There's an actual backhand and a hula hand. Backhand would be palm up all the way around and backhand delivery is palm facing you, fingertips towards the calf. The hula hand delivery, you're actually turning your hand over every time. And a hula hand delivery is palm down, fingertips towards the calf. So when I swing with the backhand in a hula hand delivery, I am anticipating my loop coming around. Because this way is more natural. You're expecting your loop to kind of wrap around the calf. This way, you have to actually deliver before you think you do. So you're swinging here and then you deliver about here and you're coming back around the other side of the cap. So I'll kind of demonstrate a little bit. Hopefully I don't mess up, probably will. This is not ideal. If at all possible, you'd swing forward hand here, but there are times when, like I say, it don't, doesn't work out like you expect. So backhand swing. The hula hand delivery. We'll do a we'll do a hula hand swing here. So as you can see, I almost released right here, right? So it takes a lot of practice. A lot of people deliver too soon or too late and that rope ends up over here on the right hand side of the cap so when you get towards the front of the cap your loop will tend to want to drape over the back end of the cap and fall off so you have to kind of judge your distance just right and just drape it on the neck and you're going to look a little feminine if you're a man trying to do this but uh kind of swing you don't over swing what I mean by that is you don't you don't swing super fast on backhands you 
slower the better to be honest and you get most of your power here so when you're swinging pull pull and let your loop do the work on the forward motion so you're pulling pulling and then when you release you're just draping it right over that chest head. Same thing here, you can get your tip back a little bit more, but it's really hard to get your tip behind you with a backhand swing. Now we're getting into the actual prescribed positions for a backhand or a hula hand. Anything on this side of the calf, ideally you'd want to be in a backhand or a hula hand swing. So now we're getting back into what I was saying earlier about turning, making your loop match the pitch of the face. And uh, kind of a sidearm hula hand. Hand delivery. From this position too, you can add a coil in your loop or two. If you can't quite get close enough. I tried it the other day, doctoring a calf, it didn't work out so well. Bigger, bigger loop, a little bit more spoke, and then I like to take a normal size coil and cut it in half. Put it in my hand. That way it doesn't kind of want to roll over the top of my spoke. And then I can add another one. When I do that, I just roll my rope around and I add the same size, maybe a hair bigger. And you want to keep them all in order like this. So you got your loop, your spoke, your first coil, your second coil. And then I hold my thumb just about like that when I'm swinging. And I have the rest of my spoke here. That's all in order. And uh, so I grab it like this. Like I say, I keep my thumb there. And then when I swing, the same process. You just have more weight in your hand. I'm going to deliver about mid-body on that cast. I don't have a lot of hang time, but it worked out. I won't show you the other five before that. So, again, we're back at this position, and we're just working our way around here. And this works good on healing, too, if you want to practice your heel loops. So that's a little exercise that I use pretty often. I try to do that as often as I can. This rope here is just black and white poly, and uh, it's got a lot of it's got really good weight to it and a good feel. Try this uh, little exercise out. Let me know what you guys think of it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, be sure to let me know in the comments below if you've ever tried something like this or what kind of techniques you use. Um, we can do more videos of some more advanced loops and stuff like that, but uh, this is just kind of a warm-up that I do every time I rope the dummy. So, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Talk to you soon.